Number 10, Birkin Bronze Radium Chocolate. Yum, hope we're eating right off the bat for this one. These delights were sold between 1931 to 1936, and these chocolates were praised for the effect that it had on its consumers. See, instead of getting a tummy ache after downing some Birkin Bronze chocolate, you would feel rejuvenated, you would feel fresh. See, this chocolate was made in real radium water, so yeah, you're gonna feel something. Guaranteed. Looking back now at the details I just provided you, yeah, you can only imagine the horror stories that slowly began to spread over these new tasty treats. My New Year's resolution, personally, is no more chocolate. And this point right here is helping me out. So, cool. No thanks. Next. Number nine. The ducking stools. Oh, this one, we thought we had something, really. This was, there's the crane, then there's the ducking stool. Both... It was close. This was a punishment used in the 16th and 17th century England, and it was usually a punishment that was reserved for women because they were witches, right? Remember? Yeah. So dumb. This punishment was given to a woman for doing what was considered unwomanly things, whatever that was supposed to mean back then, you can only imagine. Apparently, this included things like having an argument with their husband, or fighting with the neighbors, or gossiping and or backstabbing. Ugh, God forbid. Classic Middle Ages. Hey, Margaret was gossiping around town, so let's all take the day off work and then go dunk her in the river with this new stool I created. Awesome. Basically, this punishment would see a woman being tied up to a stool or a chair and then dipped into to a lake or stream over and over. It was actually, like scientifically, it was miraculous, but it was a horrible purpose. This is actually a punishment method that didn't usually end up in death, but I mean, it was pretty bad still, right? Number eight, spray on hair. All right, shout out to all my bald kings out there. There we go, if you're watching this, hit that thumbs up. The babes are back. Yeah, that's what this real advertisement says about spray on hair. The babes are back. <laughs> There we go, we can see them coming in, just like that. They went somewhere and then babes returned because of the hair, gotcha. Look, I'm 28 years old. I know a lot of guys have bad luck hair-wise at this age, and I'm not talking smack, okay? But spray on hair, it's not the solution, okay? Just buzz it, just bick it, just commit, all right? This early 1990s product did not work. It didn't sweep the nation. Men did not regain their youth for $39 plus shipping. No, it didn't happen. It just looked like spray painted cobwebs on your head. It looked like Halloween spooky cobwebs on top of your stupid head. The advertisement legitimately says the babes are back, which implies that said babes noticed his bald spot, decided as a group, had a meeting, you know, made it official that they had to leave, right? And then women decided that they loved bald guys. Then they came back because they saw the spray. No. I don't buy that. Women love bald guys, okay? Vin Diesel, The Rock, Patrick Stewart, are you kidding me? Professor X? Number seven, daylight motion pictures. I saw Avatar 2 last night and I swear hand to God, the lights stayed on for the first five minutes of the film. It was insane, it was chaos. People were yelling, ushers were throwing their visors at the lights trying to sh shut them off. It was chaos on Pandora to say the least. You need complete darkness for a film, okay? Me personally, that's my preference. I can't watch anything in the light. But also for the projector's sake, right? We need to see the movie. We have to be able to actually see it. We have 46 lights around me and you can see me. But back in the 1910s, daylight motion pictures were a thing for a hot minute, and it's as bad as it sounds. This trend moved across the country after a bill was passed, so theaters went from, you know, dark and enjoyable to bright enough so that you can see who's next to you. That was the whole point. See, it was a safety hazard for theaters to not have lights on because, you know, people are around, not sure what's going on. If they bring that back today, I'm gonna be upset. I mean, the general public's starting to get all crazy again, so we'll see. Number six, ab belts. All right, shout out to all my jacked kings out there with your nine packs. Here we go. The perfect product for guys who want an eight pack without doing any other work. Here we go, welcome to the ab belt. The ab belt sounds too good to be true and well, that's because it was. Ab belts in the 90s were as hot as Tom Hanks was in the 90s. It was insane. Everybody loved this, right? I think we may have had one growing up. Now that I think about it, I was like, what is this thing? Or it could have been something I don't even want to know. Never mind. Science can't confirm that wearing an ab belt has zero benefit. No, it just shakes your, you just gotta go to the washroom after. That's, that's really, that's it. If your company is thinking about making false claims, you should expect real lawsuits to follow. Yeah, that's why they all disappeared. Can't just say that and then, Nothing happens. No. Uh-uh. Number five, the walking sleeping bag. There we go. My brother sleepwalks. He's been sleepwalking his whole life. Where was this growing up? This would have caused a lot of more problems, actually, now that I think about it. A sleeping bag, but with footholes and a head hole. But, take this in, no holes for the arms. How fun is that? Yeah, just... Risking your life, I guess. Just legs and face. I can't think of a more dangerous product, actually. As somebody who's broken his front teeth twice, 
twice before, I can say with confidence this is the worst product in history. What well, misstep and you're just watching your doom coming closer to your face, that's it. I mean, I get it. On paper, I get that's a cozy few minutes. Maybe it's funny, make your friends laugh. But what about when you can't buy the zipper? Then what? Now you're trying to David Copperfield your way out of an escape bag of death. While you're dozy too, while you're like half asleep. No way, no thanks. Number four, radiated toys. Great for the family, here we go. There's Monopoly, then there's uh, this one right here. There's the Gilbert U238 Atomic Energy Lab set. The Gilbert U238 Atomic Energy Lab toy set, sure looks fun upon first glance, I guess, but when the company released this toy kit, toy kit back in 1950, it was all but games. Gilbert, who was a successful toy maker at the time, he was a businessman, even a magician, it's always cool, it's a triple threat right there, always cool when you're a magician on the side. He believed that his line of work should be fun yet informative. Yeah, one of those nerds. He was nicknamed the man who saved Christmas, actually, after he convinced the US Council of National Defense to not ban toy purchases during World War I around the holiday season. So he's, he's done some things, real, real business guy. He really wanted to get this one out there, he was eager. This set was around $50, which back in the day was quite a lot, and the price was justified as the set was actually radioactive. Sorry, what? That's right, the Gilbert U238 Atomic Energy Lab set contained a cloud chamber where you can actually see real alpha particles traveling at a mere 12,000 miles a second. Yeah, imagine asking for a light bright, you open that, you're like, uh, do we have the receipt? I might take this one back. Yeah, it's glowing and now I feel sick, so let's take it back. Number three, the collar. This one looks really bad at first, but then the true punishment actually comes after the crime. Here we go. The collar, this is this heavy metal ring with spikes. Now, the collar is meant to sit on your neck and it's to prevent you from moving. Like, at all. See, these spikes were adjustable, so more often than not, they would be tightened just until they're close to the neck, so that if and only when the victim moved, then it would pierce your skin. You've probably seen this in some way, shape, or form. Maybe it's tucked into the collar, but now it's more than one. I don't know. You couldn't lay down, you couldn't sleep, obviously, and although you could eat, swallowing was tough. Any slight movement, and you're gonna feel a little poke. It's not nice. Whenever I see this, I always think of the Will Smith 1999 classic, Wild Wild West. Some scary neck situations going on in that film, that's for sure. Cinematic masterpiece, that one. So good. Will Smith, man, got slaps in the cinema, you know? Number two, Spanish Tickler. Yeah, its name sounds a little fun, dare I say a little no. Mm. The Spanish tickler is all but mm. Yeah, it's also referred to as the cat's paw, which is a bit closer to its real purpose here. This Freddy Krueger looking thing was dragged down the victim's skin back in medieval times. Now, it was designed at that angle so that your flesh would be torn off of your bones and muscle uh, easily. Yeah, the Middle Ages gave us an hourglass and they also gave us this. So, you know, take your take your pick. To make things even worse, the Spanish tickler would often be attached to a pole. So users could stand far away and just, you know, have at it. What a cheap way to harm somebody or punish someone back then, right? At least get close, you wimp. I included some horrible devices like this on our list because back then in the Middle Ages, they thought they were fancy with these devices, right? Some dude's like, ah, yes, my next gadget. He has like an hourglass and stuff. And then he's like, this one will change everything. And it's the Spanish tickler. You're like, guy, we need hydro. We don't need this. Get this out of here. And finally, number one, the pair of anguish. Also known as the mouth pair or the choke pair. Awesome. Don't those both sound so intriguing and fun? The mouth pair, the choke pair, it's so gross. Hey, I left my choke pair at your house. Chris, you mind bringing that to work tomorrow? I left my uh, choke pair. Thanks, man, I need that for a staff party. This is one of the worst inventions ever, so I had to finish on it, right? I wish I didn't know about this, but I do, and now you have to as well. Hit that thumbs up for force knowledge. When you click a video on the worst things from the Middle Ages or Rome, whatever, without getting too graphic here, on the one side, the pear side, that would go into your mouth or other places if you're creative, but we'll say the mouth for this one, right? Sure. And then on the other side, there's a screw, where if you turn said screw, that pear side begins to open up. It blooms like a flower almost. I say flower, this thing is not beautiful at all, it's haunting. It's one of those inventions where it avoids the loss of blood, so again, Somebody thought they were onto something back in the day. They thought they were creative with this one. So this was a creative, horrible way to get somebody to talk without having them die, which is insane, but it's also, I admit, it's kind of creative. Also, it's kind of hard to talk when there's a choke pair in your mouth, so someone's gotta figure that out. These were also used to just prevent somebody from talking entirely, right? It was, again, creative. Starting off this countdown, we have the gas-resistant stroller. When you go out for a walk with the little guys right now, you might throw them in a stroller. It's probably the easiest way to get from A to B 
without having to wait for the little kids to catch up. They always want to stop and pick up a rock that's smooth. Like, what is it with smooth rocks that seem so cool? Anyways, back in the day when there was a concern about chemical attacks, a gas-resistant stroller was made. The gas-resistant stroller was what looks like a metal coffin on wheels. It was all the rage when mustard gas wasn't yet a war crime. It would pair nicely with a gas mask that your mom could wear as she pushed you through the streets. Honestly, it's pretty terrifying, not gonna lie. I'm glad that this isn't a thing anymore. Over to you, Rachel. Coming in at number nine, the flizz. You know that one of the safest parts about riding a bike is the fact that you can get into any sort of accident and you're not attached to it. You can kind of just fly off and jump off before you land in a mud puddle or scrape your knee or whatever. Another great part of a bike is that it has pedals and gears so you can move much faster than if you were running or walking, which is kind of the idea. Even if you're out of shape and you haven't done a lot of cardio, like the people who get up at 4 a.m. and go for runs, oh my God, those people are like on another tier, they're like gods then um, you can definitely go really fast on a bike if you want to. And what on earth is a flizz? This thing is what happens when you mix a jolly jumper with a bike and are willing to look embarrassing for everyone to see. The flizz is a bike with no pedals, so you have to push with your feet like a Flintstone. And now this obviously sucks because you wouldn't really be able to move very fast at all. They also built a harness into it so you can hang in there like you're some sort of baby Bjorn. Usually when you invent a new thing, the goal is to try and make it better than the last version of said thing instead of making it worse or really stupid. So I don't think the guy who strolls in on the flizz is going to have a swarm of men or women around them being like, oh my God, marry me, I love you because they look so sexy. They'll probably be looking at him being like, what, is he okay? And how do you go uphill with this thing? You have to just run up the hill as you're attached to a bike? What is the point of being the bike then? In our 8th spot, we have bat bombs. Yeah, not bath bombs, bat bombs. This next one is not only terrifying, but also deadly. When it comes to warfare, people can get pretty inventive. Imagine you're stalking past enemy lines in the dead of night, when all of a sudden, a web-winged furry creature swoops in and drops a bomb right at your feet. Bat bombs were an experimental weapon developed in World War II, and they are exactly as they sound. It was a bat? with a bomb attached to it. This would detonate on or near enemies. The plan was developed and submitted by Lytle S. Adams, a dentist from Irwin, Pennsylvania. He presented his idea to the White House just two months after the attack on Pearl Harbor. And they liked it and the project was greenlit. The doc assembled an oddball team, including a pilot turned actor, an ex-gangster, and an ex-hotel manager. The project was disbanded in 1943 because it was surpassed by a deadlier project. Stay tuned for that one later on in the list. Coming in at number seven, we have the Urban Baby Window Cage. <laughs> I can definitely see how this is appealing. Like you want to make sure your baby gets a lot of fresh air, but you don't have time to take them for a walk when they're young. The Urban Window Baby Cage was basically a chain link cage with a pillow inside of it. So you could just plop your baby inside and go, look, a bird. Jimmy? Apparently everyone back then would have been totally fine with Michael Jackson dangling his baby inside his window because that's what they all did, apparently. The purpose of this contraption was so that your baby could get a little fresh air because you don't want your baby to get all stuffy in your New York apartment that's the size of a shoebox. And this was in a time when elevators were both scarce and the chance of them killing you was much higher. I think Tower of Terror, but real life. So walking that potentially very chubby baby up and down 30 flights of stairs doesn't seem very fun as just hanging him outside a window so you can feel the sun in his face and hear all the slurs that New York construction workers offer to the patrons on the sidewalks. If your kid ever gets out of line, you can just throw them in the cage for a timeout. You know, that's uh, this is this is why we should forget this. It's not a good idea, guys. Let's just stick with like jolly jumpers and, and uh, cribs that are inside. That sounds like a better idea. In our sixth spot, we have the hydrogen blimps. Hydrogen blimps are labeled as one of the worst inventions of all time. Basically, it was like a big balloon in the sky. It would be pushed by propellers, and guess what they would put into the balloon to make it float? Hydrogen. Hydrogen was cheaper and more readily available, so they used it. Just there's one tiny issue with that. It was highly flammable. But they would pile people into this blimp that was fueled by hydrogen. And sadly, 
they would explode. In 1937, the Hindenburg, a German airship, caught fire and crashed in 36 seconds. It was very sad and very disastrous. But that wasn't even the first time that one exploded. Just after the Hindenburg, that's when people were like, okay, maybe this isn't safe. Now, history should never be forgotten, but maybe let's just never bring back hydrogen blimps, okay? Coming in at number five, we have plastic. I acknowledge that plastic has helped us get this far. It has been an important part of our development as a species, but just like when a young adult who has to shed their trauma that made them funny, but keep the funny, it's, it's time. It's time for us to move on from the thing that is choking our planet. Like if you go outside right now and get a box of tea, the tea will come in a box that is wrapped in plastic. The box is already a container for the tea. Why are we double wrapping it, you know? I know the purpose is to increase the shelf life, but maybe we shouldn't be keeping things on shelves that long. Maybe, I don't know. We should seek out healthier food that doesn't last as long because it doesn't have as many preservatives. Thus it would be stupid to wrap it in plastic. Just wrap it in paper or pour it into my hands. I don't know, just do it. Or have no packaging and, and everyone just goes to bulk barns and puts it in glass jars and everything like that. I think that's a pretty good idea, but you know, who knows. The plastic, it lasts a little too long. Let's just say that. In our fourth spot, we have the Brazen Bull. This is one of history's most horrific inventions. The Brazen Bull was a torture device used in ancient Greece around 560 BC. A seaside colony called Ocrigus was ruled over by a man named Phalaris. This device was commissioned for him. He wanted to turn torture into music. His court sculpture created this unique nightmarish piece. It was a hollow sculpture of a bull with bells and whistles attached, and there was enough room for the victim to be placed inside of it. The bull would then be placed over a roaring fire. And instead of screams, it was designed to sound like the grunts of a bull. Now, some say this invention was a myth, but famed poet Cicero states that, in fact, the bull did exist and was used. This remains one of the most evil inventions in history. Coming in at number three, we have the trico system. There are plenty of ways to get rid of hair in places you don't want them to be. There's waxing. Shaving, electrolysis, but this one invention deserves to be mentioned just one more time before we let history completely forget it. Never do this again. The trico system was a hair removal device that became a must have in every salon in the 1920s. And it actually worked. It would remove the hair painlessly and effortlessly. All you had to do was sit at a mahogany desk and face a small window. When the flip was switched, there was no burning, just a slight hum from the machine. But had some horrendous side effects. Yes, it would remove all the hair, but soon men and women would develop cancerous ulcers, carcinoma, and death. The reason? They were using x-ray technology, which is, as we know, radioactive. It would be administered to the skin for a few minutes and require anywhere between 15 to 20 treatments to be effective. X-ray technology was used for a variety of skin treatments around the time, and even in the late 1800s, like for ringworm and eczema. But when the trico machine was released, however, there was no mention of what the technology they were using was. They were just like the trico miracle, you know, just picture like a typical 1920s ad. And the person administering it wasn't well qualified and didn't know what it was either. They just were like, flip switch and it works. Clients were just marveled that it worked so well until it slowly burned their faces off. Of course, hindsight is 2020. how they were to know, how they were to know. Let's just put this embarrassing, dangerous blunder to the side, shall we? In our second spot, we have Agent Orange. This next one we're going to talk about should kind of be remembered so that no one ever does anything so awful ever again. Agent Orange was a pesticide that was responsible for 400,000 fatalities, disabilities, and half a million birth defects. It was invented by plant biologist Arthur Galston in 1943. He created it as a way to help accelerate the growth of soybeans in places with a short growing season. But in large doses, it actually destroyed crops, and the US decided to take this technology and abuse it. During the War of Vietnam, they sprayed the land, and 4.5 million acres of crops in Vietnam were destroyed by Agent Orange. And any exposure the Vietnamese and US, Australian and New Zealand soldiers had to this pesticide came with deadly consequences. 
It caused an abnormal amount of miscarriages, extreme birth defects, cancer, and skin conditions. Some of the land still can't even be used to this day. It's very tragic and scary. Coming in at number one, we have the atom bomb. If the name Robert Oppenheimer doesn't ring any bells, maybe this will. Coming in at number one, we have the atomic bomb. Ah, uh, see, there it is. Robert Oppenheimer invented the atomic bomb and the first one that successfully detonated created a mushroom cloud 40,000 feet high. What people did with this new invention, however, stole an unfathomable amount of lives and opened doors for even more deadly weapons. It also led to one of the most terrifying standoffs in history during the 1960s called the Cuban Missile Crisis. The USA and Soviet Russia were caught in a standoff, both with nukes pointing at each other, waiting for the other to press the big red button. Thankfully, neither did, but many countries have nukes in their arsenal ready to strike whenever they want, and they're also still used in a lot of battles and war today. Considering how much damage was done to Nagasaki and Hiroshima due to the detonations of Fat Man and Little Boy in 1945, oh man, I hope that day never comes, and they just should just get rid of them. Like, no country should just have them. Because we definitely know that it will lead to the destruction of the world if they're ever used. We just should make an agreement that, get rid, we forget, destroy all the ways of making them. Just, let's get rid. Albert Einstein was the man who prompted the USA to invent the atom bomb in order to combat the Germans in World War II. He believed the Germans were working on the bomb as well, but he found out too late that that wasn't the case and they weren't, they weren't even as far as he thought they were. He immediately regretted his decision, which is why the atomic bomb makes our list of inventions we should all forget. Just get rid of it. He's not the only one who wished it never existed. Um, he's not the only one who wished it never existed. We should just get rid of it. Like, what? It, Starting off this countdown, we have the Judas Cradle. Whoever invented this torture device was sick. So basically, the victim would be placed into a waist harness that attached to ropes. Then the victim would slowly be lowered onto this pyramid-shaped seat. And it's got a nasty, pointy top that gets inserted up their yahoo the victim was then slowly and painfully stretched open by this device eventually their body would tear and they would be impaled doesn't that just sound peachy this instrument was used until the late 1800s in europe i can't imagine how painful that must have been so let's not bring back that form of torture ever in our ninth spot we have the mousetrap pistol and if you guys are liking this video so far then make sure to give it a big thumbs up you guys already know the drill so this was an invention that seemed like a good idea at the time but in the end it was found faulty for a number of reasons so in 1882 a man named james a williams from texas decided to create a trap and i quote by which animals which burrow in the ground can be destroyed. He then took inspiration by burglar alarms from the 19th century, which was basically a pistol rigged on a contraption that would go off when someone opened a window or door. He thought that if it worked for humans, it would work for rodents too. So basically his invention consisted of a revolver or pistol attached to basically a mouse trap. When the mouse set it off, the weapon would go off. So you see how problematic that would be? It would kill the mouse, but also take out chunks of your floor. And imagine if your foot accidentally triggered that trap. Ouch. So you can see why this invention never really took off. In our eighth spot, we have the blood powered lamp. Okay, the award for the strangest invention goes to this one. The blood powered lamp is exactly what it sounds like. It's a lamp was powered by your blood. It was also called the Dracula Bulb. It was created by a man named Mike Thompson from the Netherlands, and he designed and created it not too long ago, just in 2007. You know, a time where we have electricity. So I don't know why he thought this was a good invention, but it is kind of cool, so I'll give him that. Anyways, basically the lamp contains luminol, which is what forensic scientists use to see if there's any blood at crime scenes. Luminol reacts with the iron in blood, and as a result, it creates this bright blue glow. So this guy thought it would be a good idea to make a lamp out of luminol. Only thing is that you need to cut yourself every time that you want to use it. Basically, to use the lamp, first you mix an activating powder, then you break the ball. You cut yourself, and then you add your blood in it. As a result, the lamp will start to glow. Like I said, it's kind of cool, but also 
kind of really unnecessary. Coming in at number seven, we have the Pair of Anguish. This was another disgusting medieval torture device. So the Pair of Anguish, sometimes called the Choke Pair, was this pear-shaped metal device that you never want to be subjected to. So basically, this device was inserted into a victim's <clears throat> downstairs area or their mouth. Then they could turn the screw attached to this device and the pair pieces would bloom, basically expanding and it would stretch your openings. It was often used to get information or a confession out of someone. Basically the device will get so uncomfortable that you'll either cave in or it'll rip your skin apart. What's sick is that they didn't want to use this device to kill someone. No, no, they wanted it to just stretch them apart slowly to cause immense pain that lasts for hours or even days. In our sixth spot, we have the Scold's Brittle. This terrifying looking mask thing is referred to as the Scold's Brittle. The first recorded use of this device was back in 1564 Scotland. Shortly after, England started using them as well. Basically, this mask was a form of public humiliation and torture. Basically, women were forced to wear this as a form of punishment for behaving immodest or rude, or if they were accused of infidelity or witchcraft. So this mask would be locked on over their head so they couldn't remove it. Then there was a spike mouthpiece attached to it so they weren't allowed to speak. They then had to walk around in public wearing it. It was meant to inflict pain on the person while simultaneously causing public humiliation. We are now at our fifth and halfway mark with the Iron Maiden. And I'm not talking about the band here. Chances are you have heard of this disturbing invention. Basically, it was a coffin-like device that was lined with spikes. The victim was then placed in the coffin and then the executioner would close the door. The spikes were then shot directly into the victim's body. But here's the thing. They specifically positioned the spike so that the victim wouldn't die immediately. Instead, it would be a slow and painful death where they just slowly bled out. That is terrifying. Also, who was responsible for cleaning that device? Cause that would suck. Coming in at number four, we have the spike collar. So picture the Iron Maiden and now picture it around your neck. That's basically what the spike collars were. A collar with spikes all on the inside. It was then placed on a victim and the spikes would dig into their necks. What's worse than the discomfort is the fact that they wouldn't be able to lay down or sleep. They also couldn't eat or drink, so they would just suffer with this thing on for days on end. For prisoners, after the collar was placed on their neck, it was then fastened with ropes to the four walls in the room. The prisoner would stand in the middle. If they moved even an inch in one direction, the spikes would impale them so they would have to stand incredibly still. In our third spot, we have the rack. Although this invention doesn't have a scary name, don't be deceived, it is very gruesome. This was a popular torture device from medieval Europe. Basically, the victim would have their ankles and wrists tied to this device so that they were spread open. Then two executioners would crank the gears and the machine would slowly pull their limbs in the opposite directions, stretching them farther and farther apart until eventually mm, they were ripped right off. I'm telling you, people back in the day were sick. Seriously, imagine if we use this now for criminals. That would never fly. Moving on at number two, we have the dimple machine. Everyone is born with unique features. Maybe you have a butt chin, or unique birthmarks, or dimples. Now, if you don't have dimples, don't worry. There's a device that will give you some. Back in 1936, a woman named Isabella Gilbert created a device that will give people dimples. You know, if you weren't born with them and you were jealous. So basically how this works is the dimpleless person would place this contraption over their face. The device had two sets of knobs on either side of it that would poke into your skin. It was believed that if you were to wear this long enough, then it would train your cheeks to create dimples on their own. I'm sorry, no, that looks terrifying and also painful. And in our number one spot, we have the electric smile. Back in 2011 in Japan, a very weird invention was made to help children smile. It's crazy. So basically, it forces kids to smile by sending electric shocks to the kids' cheeks. This causes the face muscle to contract and voila, you gotta smile. 
This is wrong on so many levels, but it was targeted towards parents as a method to snap their kids out of a tantrum or to make sure they are looking perfect out in public. Here's the creepy part. The shock is so strong that the smile can last for days. And a side effect is that it can cause some twitching. Like I said before, this invention is just so wrong on so many levels. I can't believe it's a real thing. Starting off this countdown, we have the Iron Chair. Imagine the Iron Maiden, but in chair form. Basically, this was a torture device used in the Middle Ages. Victims were placed onto a chair that was filled with hundreds of sharp spikes. There could be anywhere from 500 to 1500 spikes. They were strapped into the chair and when their restraints were tightened, the spikes would dig into their flesh. And they often left the victims there for hours, even sometimes days, just suffering. Sometimes there was a hole on the seat and then a fire was lit below them. But the most common way this chair was used for was actually psychological torture. The victim was often strapped in and then would have to watch another person die in front of them. It was either you confess to your crimes or you die from the chair or die another painful death like the person you saw die. This device was used until the late 1800s in Europe. And at number nine, we have the chain smoker and I'm not talking about the band here. But if you guys are liking this video so far, make sure to give it a big thumbs up because it really helps me out. This invention was created for those who wanted to smoke not one, not two, but 20 cigarettes at one time. That is lung cancer just waiting to happen. But it was pretty popular in the mid 20th century. So this invention was bad for a number of reasons. Number one, cigarettes can kill. Imagine smoking 20 at once. Think about what that would do to your teeth, gums, skin, and lungs. Also think about how expensive it would be to fuel that addiction. In our eighth spot, we have the breaking wheel. The breaking wheel was an ancient device used to torture and or kill prisoners. Typically, it was used during public executions. Basically, how this device works is it's a giant wheel with spokes. The person was then strapped to the wheel and then beat, or the wheel was slammed down on them. The most common thing would be having them lay on the wheel, and then the executioner would hit them. Their body was woven between the spokes of the wheel so that when they were hit, their limbs would give away and break. It's really gruesome. Either they were hit until death, or they were just left there after being badly injured to die a slow, painful death. Moving on to number seven, we have the beauty micrometer. This device was basically a way to make you feel really crappy about your appearance. So it was designed in the 1930s and was used as a beauty calibrator to see how beautiful you were and what areas needed more work. And those areas that needed work were where the makeup was applied. The machine itself looked like a medieval torture device with like screws and these weird strips attached to it. The machine itself was made by a beautician, Max Factor Senior. Yeah, yes, a man telling women how to look. Anyways, this machine is terrifying and its users would often have terrible headaches after wearing this device. Coming in at number six, we have the mass shaving machine. And this invention is exactly what it sounds like. This was popular back in the 19th century. It allowed barbers to shave 12 men at the exact same time. This device would first coat everyone's face with shaving cream or whatever they used back then. And then there was a blade hooked onto it and it would go and shave the men's face. No, just no. Everyone has different face shapes. That blade could come down and slice your face or something. I'm just glad it isn't around today. I know everyone wants efficiency, but this invention could go wrong for a number of reasons. We're now at our fifth and halfway mark with the flatulence filtering underwear. This one has got to be the weirdest one on this list. Basically, if you're a person that has really bad gas, don't worry, this underwear has got you covered. Basically, if you toot, the underwear somehow filters it so no odor comes out. No, I'm sorry, that's just weird as heck. Please, let's not make this a thing. Next thing you know, a company is gonna come out with like underwear that makes your farts smell like things, like strawberries or marshmallows. I don't need this becoming a trend, okay? Like, ooh, who has the best farts? No. Moving on to number four, we have the creeping baby. If dolls creep you out, then you would not be a fan of this invention at all. In 1871, a man named George P. Clark invented this doll baby thing. 
His goal was to make a doll that crawls exactly how a baby does. But boy, did it turn out really creepy. So the doll's head, arms, and legs were made out of painted plaster. From there, they were hinged onto a brass clockwork body. The doll then moves forward by rolling along on two toothed wheels. But honestly, it just looks like a creepy robot baby. So not only is this doll terrifying looking, but it can slowly creep along. Yeah, no, just no. Let's just leave it in the past, no thank you. In our third spot, we have the revolver camera. Again, it's just as it sounds. Basically, it was a gun that would take a picture when you pull the trigger. Yeah, you heard me correctly. It was meant to take a photo exactly when the bullet hit the target. Okay, but don't worry, there were no bullets in the camera when they took the photos. Basically, in around 1938, this device was created. A tiny camera was attached to the underside of the barrel and the front of the trigger guard. It was attached so that every time the trigger was pulled, it would snap a photo. Now, there's no evidence that this gun was actually used. They only used it for trial photo shoots. And like I said, it was used without bullets. Or so that's what historians assume. Sadly, we don't know much about this invention and its purpose. Was someone trying to make something cool? Or did they want to take photos of their victims? Either way, that would be super bad to bring back. Uh, you can imagine why. Like here, let me take your photo. And then everyone screams and runs away. Moving on to number two, we have the thumb screws. This was a common form of interrogation used in medieval Europe. If the criminal was not behaving or giving the information that they wanted, then they would resort to using this device. Basically, it was a vice that would clamp down on a person's thumbs or fingers. Then the vice was slowly tightened putting more and more pressure on the person's thumbs. Also, they were locked in place with a padlock, so they couldn't escape. They were left there until they made a confession. If not, their fingers were shattered. And in our number one spot, we have the head pressure. Just the sound of this invention alone is gnarly. And it's pretty self-explanatory. The device was basically a vice for the head. I know. I know, it's gross. So basically it was a metal device that hooked onto a person's jaw and then head. Then the executioner would twist the handle and it would push the head and jaw together. And then you get it. I'm telling you, there were some pretty sick people back in the day. They had fun with torture. On top of that, some versions of this device had a little thing at the front to catch the victim's eyeballs when they popped out. Mmm, yum. Starting off this countdown, we have the nose stylus. The fact that this is even a thing is insane. So the nose stylus is just as it's out. A stylus you put on your nose to use your phone. But it makes you look like a terrifying version of Pinocchio or a freaking plague doctor. Like, I'm sorry, but it looks terrifying. But it's marketed as a way to use your phone hands-free. You just attach this thing onto your nose and you scroll away. I'm sorry, but it just seems like way too much work. I think it's easier for me to just use my hands. Plus, in all the advertisements, it shows the dude having one hand on the phone. So technically, it's not hands-free. The inventor claims that he came up with this idea when he was taking a bath and wanted to use his phone, but didn't want his wet hands to touch his phone. Dude, if you need to use your phone in the bath, then like, that's insane. That's a phone addiction right there. I don't know, I just find this whole thing pointless and also very creepy. Like, come on, that whole thing is nightmare fuel. If I saw someone wearing that, I'd legit think that they were a demon or something. Moving on to number nine, we have the tanning beds. Now, this one probably seems like a weird invention to have on this list, but tanning beds are so bad for us, but people still continue to use them. For a while, people thought that tanning beds were safer than tanning in the sun. Wrong. They're both equally bad. In reality, tanning beds tremendously increase your risk of developing skin cancer. It also causes premature aging and uh, trust me, no one wants wrinkles. So the UV radiation you are exposed to from tanning beds can promote skin cancer in two ways. One, it damages the DNA in your skin cells, which can cause the skin to grow abnormally and cause benign or malignant growths to develop. Or two, it can weaken the body's immune system, which affects the body's natural defenses against cancer cells. The most dangerous form of skin cancer is melanoma. It accounts for most of the deaths due to skin cancer each year. Hence why tanning beds are not a smart invention. Like, it slowly kills you after every use. 
Moving on to number eight, we have the Roman candle. This is considered one of the most brutal methods of torture in the ancient world. So first, the unlucky victim would be tied to a stake and then nailed to it. Then they were covered in flammable liquid and set on fire. Hence why they were called the Roman candle. They were literally turned into human candles. This was a slow and painful way to go. Emperor Nero was known for using this as his preferred method of execution. In fact, he would use his victims literally as torches for his garden parties. Yeah, you heard me. This dude used real life people to light up his garden. That's just sick and incredibly twisted. In our seventh spot today, we have the 3D printed death machine. Recently, a man named Dr. Philip Nischke announced he created a 3D printed death machine known as the Sarco, short for the sarcophagus. Basically, it's a way for people to take their own lives. Literally, I'm not making this up. Who the hell would even think of creating such a thing? Obviously this guy. Anyways, the person would willingly climb into the device and slowly it would suck out all the oxygen in there so that they would slip unconscious and then die. He said it's a way to take people's lives more peacefully. But not everyone can use this device. Apparently people that have been deemed mentally fit and have a legit reason for wanting to die can only use it. Obviously it's a very, very controversial invention. Moving on to number six, we have the lead sprinkler. Back in the day, people were wilding. I swear, they had contests to see who could come up with the most disturbing and gruesome torture devices out there. Like, who the heck thinks of these things? Like this device. So the lead sprinkler was a device that was filled with typically molten lead. But in other cases, it would be filled with tar, boiling oil, or even boiling water. Basically, they just wanted some sort of liquid that would burn the victim's skin right off. So basically, the victim was tied down and then the liquid in the device was sprinkled all over them, typically on their stomach or eyes. If it was poured on the eyes, it would cause the victim to go blind. If they wanted to kill the victim, they would fill the device with molten silver. That would lead to an excruciating pain until their death. So the only sprinkler I want to remember and use is the garden sprinkler. We're now at our fifth and halfway mark with the tongue terror. And yes, it's exactly what it sounds like. It was a device used to rip off or cut off a victim's tongue. First, there was a part of the device that would open the victim's mouth nice and wide. It was called the mouth opener. Very creative name, I know. So once their mouth was forced open, the tongue terror would grab the tongue with its grippers. Once it's got a good grip, it was twisted and this would cause it to become tighter and tighter on the victim's tongue. It took about three twists before the tongue would just rip off completely. Yeah, no thank you, I like my tongue the way it is. Coming in at number four, we have these cement shoes. So this next invention was actually invented by the American Mafia. They would use it to execute their enemies. Basically, it involves placing their victim's feet inside of cinder blocks. They were then filled with wet cement. Once it was dried, they would obviously have cement all around their feet, which is incredibly heavy if you didn't know. They were then tossed into bodies of water like rivers or lakes or even the ocean. And the person would sink right down to the bottom and drown. That way, there was no mess that they had to clean up and it would be harder for them to find the person's body unless someone decided to dive deep down to the ocean floor. It's believed that criminals still use this to this day, which is terrifying. There could be hundreds of dead bodies out there that we just haven't found yet. Coming in at number three, we have the crocodile shears. What's more terrifying than a crocodile, you ask? An alligator, no, I'm just kidding. This invention known as the crocodile shears. So these were invented and used in late medieval Europe. They were typically used for men that tried to assassinate the king. And dude, this was a brutal form of torture. So this device was made of metal and it basically was like a big pair of scissors lined with spikes on both ends that looked like crocodile teeth. Now take a guess at where these shears were placed. Hmm, <clears throat> right down on the male's private parts. In fact, sometimes they were heated to make it even worse. Then they were just placed down there and closed so it would snip it right off. I know a bunch of you just flinched. Yeah, I can't imagine how painful that would be. Sometimes the victim would live. Other times, if it struck an artery, they would bleed to death. Moving on to number two, we have the Spanish tickler. But don't be fooled by the name, okay? This device does anything but tickle you. But can we talk about tickling for a second? Like that is a messed up form of torture on its own. Like when you get tickled, 
it hurts like crazy, but at the same time, it makes you laugh. Like, make up your mind. Is it fun or is it painful? It's, I hate it, okay? Anyways, the Spanish tickler was the set of metal claws that one could slip their hands into. The device often had three or four claws or sharp curved spikes attached to it. And like I said, it's not used for tickling. Instead, the person wearing it could dig the claws into someone's flesh and then rip it away. It literally was strong enough to tear muscle and flesh right off the victim's bones. This device also came in a variety of sizes and colors. Fun fact. Often, this device wouldn't be used to kill the victim, but instead just leave them severely wounded. And in our number one spot today, we have the scavenger's daughter. This next invention is incredibly messed up and brutal. It was created by Sir Leonard Skevington during the reign of Henry VIII. Basically, it was a metal rack that was shaped kind of like in an A. It would then be wrapped around a person in a crouched position. Their head was strapped to the top point of the A, the hands would be at the midpoints, and the legs near the lower ends. The frame would then fold, forcing the person's head to their knees and knees to their head, crushing them into a tiny ball. It would squeeze them so tight until blood would pour out from their nose and ears. Yeah, no thank you. No thank you. And I'm glad that this isn't a thing anymore because it was mainly used for women. Starting off this countdown, we have lead paint. Exposure to even low levels of lead can cause serious damage, especially to children. Homes built before the 1960s most likely contain lead-based paint. This becomes a problem if the paint chips, peels, or flakes off, because then you have the risk of inhaling the lead paint particles. In fact, back in the day, lead acetate was used in the paint so that it would dry faster. Well, lead acetate has a sweet taste. In fact, it was given the name sugar of lead. Anyways, children were going around eating paint chips off of the floor or walls because it had a sweet taste to it. But of course, ingesting any level of lead is dangerous. It can cause irreversible brain damage in children or serious damage to the kidney and nervous system in both children and adults. Honestly, because of how dangerous it is, it's something that should have never been invented. Moving on to number nine, we have Alestra. And if you guys are liking this video so far and want to see more videos like it, then make sure to smash that like button and let me know in the comments below. Olestra is a fat substitute that apparently contains no calories, no cholesterol, and no fat. So sounds healthy, right? Wrong. So people were using it to make high fat foods like potato chips to make it, you know, healthier. Little did they know about the side effects. The big one being, it prevents the absorption of certain vitamins and minerals. As a result, they would go undigested through the intestines and cause a number of digestive problems. Nowadays, a number of countries have banned this product, like Canada and some European countries. But it's still available in the States. Coming in at number 8, we have the wearable parachute. Ever wanted to have the ability to fly on your own? Well, inventor Franz Rijelt did. In fact, he invented a wearable parachute. Basically, it was like one big cloak type sweater thing that you would slip into. He thought it would allow people to jump off of high places and then easily descend down. But it was a very dangerous invention for obvious reasons. On February 4th, 1912, Franz decided to test his invention in front of a crowd. He went to the top of the Eiffel Tower and jumped. Sadly, the parachute immediately folded around his body and he plummeted straight to his death. Moving on to number seven, we have the anti-eating mask. As someone who loves food, this invention would be my worst nightmare. Back in the 1980s, someone thought that this would be an easy way to help people diet or lose weight. Basically, it's a mask slash cage thing that you strap onto your face. When you wear this mask, you're not able to eat, so it forces you not to. Also, it was opened and closed with a key, so someone could strap this mask onto your face and then take away the key. So you're literally forced to sit there and suffer without eating. Definitely not a healthy dieting solution at all. Instead, this just seems like some sick, twisted form of torture. In our sixth spot, we have cigarettes. I mean, it's not really a shocker that this one is on the list. Smoking cigarettes is responsible for more than 480,000 deaths per year in the US alone. That's about 1,300 deaths every day. 
On top of that, smokers die about 10 years earlier than non smokers. Then you have the fact that smoking can cause asthma, lung disease, heart disease, stroke, oral cancer, throat cancer, tongue cancer, lung cancer, and more. It literally causes its users to become addicted to it and then slowly but surely kills them. Think about what the world would have been like without cigarettes. We're now at our fifth and halfway mark with styrofoam. Another super, super bad invention for us and the earth. Now, fun fact the stuff that we think is styrofoam actually isn't. It's polystyrene. Styrofoam is light blue in color and is used in building insulation. And of course, it takes years to break down. Not only that, if you try to burn it, it will release at least 50 toxic chemicals into the air. It's just another huge polluter that's killing our planet. Moving on at number four, we have the flying car. It's a bird, it's a plane, no, it's a flying car. Ever wish you had a flying car like Ron and Harry and Harry Potter? Well, there was almost a time when this was gonna be a thing. So back in around the 1970s, a man named Henry Smolinski and his partner, Hal Blake, were trying to invent a flying car. They took the wings of an aircraft and configured it onto a car. As you can imagine, they had a quite difficult time with this. At first, they experienced a number of engine failures, and then there were problems with the plane's wings. On September 11th, 1973, Henry and Hal were taking their invention for a spin when the wings detached from the vehicle during a test flight. The car crashed down into a pickup truck and burst into flames. Both inventors lost their lives. So as cool as a flying car sounds, maybe let's not invent it, okay? Sure, it would free up road space, but like imagine getting into a car accident mid-air. It would be super messy and dangerous. Moving on to number three, we have the radium products. Before we knew how dangerous radium was for us, doctors and companies were using it in a number of products. It was being put in water, toothpaste, makeup, etc. It was thought to be this magical substance that would make you healthier and more attractive. Little did they know, it could kill you. There was this one man whose name was Eben Byers. He was taking this radium powder which he believed would increase his sex drive. In the end, his lower jaw fell off because he was using this so much. Like what? That's terrifying. Moving on to number two, we have the car dog sack. Now I can't believe that someone genuinely thought that this next invention was a good idea. Basically, back in the 1930s, someone was like, who wants to ride with their dog in the car with them? No, let's put them on the outside of the car. Someone invented a dog sack that hooks onto the dog and then onto the outside of a car. Then you literally just drive along with your dog just outside of the car, flapping in the wind. Hello, this is wrong for a number of reasons. One, that is super unsafe for your poor little dog. Imagine taking a sharp turn and then the dog just like is swinging side to side. Number two, what if you get into a car crash? Sorry, but doggy would be the first to go. Also, I know that dogs like sticking their head out of the window when in cars, but this is way different and just straight up dangerous. And in our number one spot today, we have plastic bags. I mean, plastic in general is super bad for the environment. But today, let's focus specifically on plastic bags, which are polluting our earth. So the plastic bag was invented in the 1960s and was credited to Swedish engineer Sten Gustaf Thulin. At first, it was great, you know, so convenient. You could grab this tiny little bag, you know, do a little shake it out, shove things in, and then just toss it when you're done. Little did they know how big of a problem it would become. For starters, in America alone, 100 billion plastic bags are used a year. That's just in America, one country. In order to make that many bags, it requires 12 million barrels of oil. Not only that, but less than one in seven bags are actually properly recycled. Most of it are just thrown in the landfill. And it takes 1,000 years to degrade. And even then, they don't break down completely. 
Instead, they become microplastics that absorb toxins and continue to pollute the environment. There's literally no benefits to using them at this point. Lastly, birds often mistake shredded plastic bags with food. Same with sea turtles. They think that the bags are jellyfish in the ocean. And fish are starting to be found with plastic in their stomach. It's said that by 2050, there will be more plastic in the sea than fish. So we would have been way better off without this invention.